please put your hands together for Jamie the Wolf. She sent me her suicide note as a text message. All it said was, I'm sorry it had to end this way. I know you'll understand. There was no warning, no waving red flags. Our last goodbye was a slurred, I'll see you later at a dive bar two weeks ago. And she weaved her way into the dark. She didn't show up at work for two days until her roommate found her face down in a bouquet of bile. The medics plumped their stomach clean of the 28 Vicodin in the court of Jack and then strapped up under cameras for 48 hours. They're not sure how she survived. It was a miracle she didn't pray for. She wanted to go out quiet on her bed, her hands clasped across her chest, but pills don't let anyone die sleeping beauty. Your body can't stomach such an easy defeat. She woke up just long enough to dry heave hemorrhage over her fists on the floor. Her face gone purple, blacked white until she blacked out under strobe lights. All she wanted was silence, but she woke to screaming sirens and her heartbeat becoming a metronome out of a machine. They only give her one phone call. She calls me with her last quarters. She wants to hear from a mouth who's tasted a gun barrel. The one who's seen the mental hospital, not in the movies. I'm the only Houdini she knows who's ever talked his way out of a straitjacket. I don't blame her for fumbling for the off switch. Too many years, I've looked at my wrists like books that needed to be opened to the last chapter. Until the night I skipped to the ending, took a broken razor, and tore my arms open like envelopes. Now they're resealed like a secret I was never supposed to read. She says she didn't know why she did it. She says she wanted to go to sleep and never wake up again. I know there's more to that story, but I don't push it. Not when her rib cage is still wearing a paramedic's fingerprints. So I let the question hang in the air like an answer too hard to say. Anyone can force their way to the exit. The hard part is finding your way back and right now, the only way out is down a hallway it takes three keys to unlock through an orderly ready to protect your own tongue from your teeth. The hours she didn't ask for are spent watching the clock tick. She says this place makes her feel crazy. <laughs> then laughs for the first time in weeks. Before, she wanted to escape her own life. Now, she just wants to get the hell out of these green painted walls and to fix whatever she has left. She says in here, you have to prove yourself sane. But the tranquilizers help. Turn your smile into a jigsaw puzzle. Make the answers come easy to the doctor's questions to determine whether you're a short time visitor or a long time tenant. This is the exit interview, the soft interrogation where you go from patient to prisoner. The doctor will click his pen against his teeth as he writes down what to do with the future you didn't want to live through. She wants my advice, so I tell her, remember everything you say is about to be held against you. Once you've taken your own life hostage, you have to be clever once you negotiate its release. Tell the doctor that night was a horrible accident, a mistake you've already learned from, that the police sirens in the emergency ward put everything in x-ray clarity again. Tell him answers you don't have to believe right now. Tell him even though you unplugged the phone that this is just a cry for help. Admit you're broken. Ask for the latest fix they got in the drawer. Ask for a hotline number and counseling hours. Ask for a pill prescription they'll never give you enough to overdose on. Whatever it takes to escape until you can sign yourself out with a shaky hand. Look at your signature. Remember your kindergarten teacher and the days it took to teach you each letter that made up your name. 
get your wallet back. Stare at your flattened eyes in your driver's license picture. Take back your keys to a house that will still smell like the night you gave up. When the hospital door is shut behind you, you'll debate whether the sun is rising like a guillotine or an opening curtain. Be careful who you call to come get you. Whoever picks you up is going to look at you like a ghost in their passenger seat. They'll tell you if you need anything, just a call. They'll check in on rotating shifts. Allow them their anger, your memorial no one was planning for. When you get home, watch how the world never waited. Watch TV knowing that these sitcoms would still play even if you weren't here to see them. Your phone's gonna ring. No, you have to answer it, otherwise they'll kick down the door again. A week later, you'll wake up knowing that your funeral would have been today. It's not that you failed at your final. You just asked the wrong question. I tell her, I look at my scars now as an answer that most people never live to see. Attempting suicide isn't a mistake. It's your own life slapping you awake. You hear that bird outside? You wouldn't have. Today's newspaper hitting your doorstop? You never would have seen it. Now you're a sequel to yourself. You were your own near-death experience, and that night face down on the floor was just prologue. So keep this new beginning simple. Light a cigarette, start the coffee, avoid looking in the mirror too long as you brush your teeth. It's gonna be hard to meet your own eyes for a while, but feel lucky that the mirror can still reflect you back. Been there, snap judgment.